Welcome to the Python video tutorial on reading in numeric data into Python with NumPy. Now, in this case, we are using numbers, so if you have data that has text in it, bad things will probably happen. So right now, we're just going to work on numeric data. I have downloaded some data sets. Uh, they're the babies data set .csv. There is a link in the description below to a Google uh, drive resource where you can go and download the data sets. Uh, there's also another file there that you can download as well. Uh, it's called restaurant weight and we're going to use that so you can go there and get started. So remember we're using NumPy so we got to import NumPy and I'm going to give it the alias NP. All right so we've done this before so all you need to do is look at the last video and everything should be set up. We are also going to use a another package, which is OS, and basically this is operating system, and uh, so this allows us to set a working directory. So load the operating system package. So it allows us to change things. I'm not going to give it an alias because it's already pretty short. So we're going to set a working directory. And what this does is this is a directory on your hard drive where you want all your results to go. Okay, so everything you're going to do is going to go to this working directory. So if you save things or read in files, it's always going to look to this one directory unless you specify otherwise. And that makes your life easier in keeping things or, uh, reasonably oriented. So I'm going to run both of these. All right, so let's set the working directory. I'm going to do OS. And let's hit the dot again. And you can see it pops up. I want to do change directory. So I've clicked change directory here. Let me put in my directory that I'm interested in. So I'm on the C drive. And you have to use the forward slash, even though Windows uses the backward slash. Uh, Python likes the forward slash, so you're going to be stuck with it. So I'm in users, ed, and this is the desktop because this is where I'm putting things. Uh, and this should get, change my working directory to this desktop. So if I run this, you'll see that it just doesn't seem to do anything. But when I start reading in files, it's really going to help. So let's do x1, and we're going to do gen from txt. And this is an np file, or a, a numpy, uh, or numpy uh, function, and we're going to use it. And so here what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to give it some information, if I can actually type. So it's going to want a file name, and the file name we're going to do is restaurant wait if i can spell it dot csv we're going to have that's it in text and we're going to need the delimiter which is the value that tells it when a new value is so in our case we're using a comma separated value so we're going to put a quote a comma and a quote so this delimiter is saying look every time you see a comma we have a new column essentially and if i spelled everything right it worked now i can actually come to file explorer and come here and look to see and so it's called rest rant wait and that looks correct so let's give this a go and see what happens we'll run this and it did something and i can actually come over to variable explorer and see that it read in some values and what's neat in variable explorer i can double click on this and it actually shows me the array so here's column zero row zero remember it indexes at zero so it actually shows me the data and it's a show background color and it just kind of changes the color depending on how big the number is. So it can be useful for some things, maybe not so useful for other things. All right, so this works for this one, but in this data set, when you download it, if you open it in Excel or LibreOffice or something, you'll notice there is no header in this. The data starts at the very first row. There's no idea what any of the columns mean, but it's set there. All right, so what we can do also is I'm going to do NP again, and then I'm going to gen from text. It's going to read it in, and I have the babies data set. So it's a CSV data set, but it does have a header row. So I need to deal with this header row. So I'm going to put delimiter equals, again, a comma, and then I'm going to have to do skip, if I can spell it right, underscore header equals 
one. And basically what that's saying is how many rows do I need to go down before my data actually starts. So remember, Python indexes from zero. So when I put one in, this is actually saying go to row number two in the data set. So if I do this, you will be able to see what happens. And hopefully I typed everything correctly. And bingo, I get another data set here. And here are the values, uh, x1, x2, and another value, which is actually their age, if you go in and look at it uh, via the Excel or LibreOffice, or even just a text editor. But this gives us the ability to read this data in from a CSV file. And you can use other delimiters as well if you're familiar with how to do that. I'm just going to stick with CSVs for right now because they're really easy to use. Uh, we'll, later, we'll worry about reading in different other types of data. All right. So what we might want to do is actually play with these because these give us uh, NumPy arrays or NPy arrays. So what I want to do is I want to put in here X1, and I'm just going to type in size. And let's see what this produces. Okay. And when we do this, you can see it says it's 30. What does that mean? There's 30 data points in it. But if I do this with X2, we can see what it does. And notice that it gives us 69. And that is not exactly what we're looking for. So before we get too far, let's put in a little comment up here. Jen from TXT reads in numeric data and then put a com I'm going to put dots here I'm going to say be sure to tell it the delimiter what goes between each one okay so this gets us going we have two data sets but the other thing we might want to do is x2 shape now, if I do shape, this is going to give me a different bit of information. Notice it tells me that there are 23 rows and three columns. And this is actually more useful, especially if you're trying to do some programming. So if you wanted to know how many rows of data you have, you can do x2 dot shape. And the first argument happens to be number 23. And if I want number 23, it's the first argument, but we index at zero. So we use this shape and we use our brackets, put it on here and bingo, 23 comes out. If I was interested in the number of columns, so let's put this down here. Uh, let me move things a bit. So number of rows, and we can also get number of columns if we need that separately. And we might want to write them into values, and in later videos, we will actually do that. So here we go. We've got this. Let's see what shape does. And bingo, it gives us the three. And that's what we were looking for. Okay, so this is probably enough for this video because all I want you to be able to do is get the data, download the data, see if you can't read it in, and determine the shapes. Uh, you can also look at the data. We'll learn how to actually play with the data and process the data in later videos. But right now, we've figured out how to get data in, which if we're going to do statistics, that's one thing we got to be able to do. All right, so we've gone far enough. Let's move on to the next video.